Hello, my name is Joyce Harper and I'm Professor of Reproductive Science at the Institute for Women's Health at University College London. And my latest book, Your Fertile Years, is being published in April 2021 by Sheldon Press and is available now to pre-order on Amazon. Each week, I am making a video and writing a short blog summarising the main points of each chapter of the book. And this video is about chapter nine, what causes infertility and how we test for it. Infertility is defined as when a couple have been trying to get pregnant for one year, but have not been successful. And this is very age dependent. So if a couple, are, if the woman is under 35 and she's been trying for a year and she's not got pregnant, she you may then wish to go for some further tests. But if she's over 35 years, because of age-related fertility decline, which I talked about in chapter one and two of my book, she may wish to only try for about six months before she goes for some tests. We did some work with the app Natural Cycles, and one of the studies we did was looked at the time to pregnancy for women using the app. So we looked to see how many women were pregnant within a year. And actually the majority of the women were pregnant within six months and 90% overall were pregnant within a year. Now this app measures one of the markers of ovulation, which I discussed in chapter one of the book. And this marker they use is basal body temperature. So this is the temperature when the woman wakes up and it's the, that temperature, <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, rises on the day of ovulation. So the app will learn about the woman's cycle and help her know and predict when she's going to ovulate. We must remember that it takes two to make a baby. So we have male infertility and female infertility. And if we just look at the woman, we're only looking at half of the story. So male infertility accounts for about a quarter of infertility reasons, female infertility also about a quarter, and a quarter are both male and female. And the rest is what we call unknown. We don't know why the couple are experiencing infertility. Now, we really wish there was a test that could help a woman predict, predict her fertility. So maybe she could have the test at 28 and it would say, yes, you've got five years of infertility left, or, oh, actually you've got problems. You might may want to have children earlier than later. But unfortunately, we don't have this reliable predictor of a woman's fertility at the moment. There are some IVF clinics and some companies that offer what they call a fertility MOT. And in its simplest form, this is measuring anti-malarian hormone or AMH. And this hormone is very related to the number of eggs a woman has, and it decreases as the woman ages. The trouble is that um, it, this is only looking at the quantity of the eggs and not the quality of the eggs. So it's not a really accurate predictor of a woman's fertility. And indeed, we know women that have a very poor AMH can still get pregnant naturally. And those that have a really good AMH may still have infertility issues or their partner may have infertility. So AMH is going to only give us a slight indication and it can actually stress women out when they think that their AMH is poor and that they're going to have problems and actually it's fine. One of the problems is that a lot of the studies on AMH have been done on infertile couples, not the normal fertile population who are getting pregnant naturally. So this is why we're still learning, but at this moment in time, um, myself, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, the British Fertility Society, etc., feel that just measuring AMH is not a good indicator of a woman's potential fertility. Now this pie chart here shows us the main causes of infertility in women. So 40%, the biggest cause are ovulation disorders, 30% are tubal factors, 14% by endometriosis, 10% are other factors, and 3% are uterine factors or cervical factors. In this talk and in the blog, I'm just going to talk about the top three. So ovulation, tubal, and endometriosis. So if we're looking at ovulation disorders, I think it's really important for women to understand their menstrual cycle. And I go through this in chapter one of the book. A regular cycle that's between 21 and 35 days is considered normal, but the alarm bells may start ringing if the woman has a cycle shorter than 21 days, longer than 35 days, 
or if the cycle is very irregular. If the cycle is very irregular, it's really hard to know when the woman is actually ovulating or maybe not ovulating. So I think it's really important for women when they're trying to get pregnant to understand when they are ovulating. And as I said in the previous slide, they may use something like the basal body temperature, cervical mucus or the ovulation sticks, which measure this hormone, luteinizing hormone, which can help a woman detect whether she's ovulating. There, there are many reasons why there may be problems with the menstrual cycle and with ovulation, but certainly as a woman ages, and I talked about this in chapter two of the book, she will experience age-related fertility decline the closer she gets to the menopause. So this will have an effect on ovulation. She will either ovulate um, a poor quality egg that's not capable of making a baby, or she might not ovulate at all. Now, a woman can understand about her cycle, and this is really useful, but if she feels that there's any issues, such as shorter, longer, or irregular cycles, or if, if she has any concerns about her menstrual cycle and ovulation, she can go and see her doctor and get tests done to check the hormones at various stages of her cycle. So they will check, for example, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, um, estradiol and progesterone to see what they are doing during the cycle and to see if they can detect any abnormalities. The fallopian tubes are also needed to have natural conception. The fallopian tubes are shown as this diagram here. They connect the ovaries to the, to the womb and the egg is released from the ovary and it goes into the fallopian tube and the sperm will swim up through the cervix and down the fallopian tube and it will meet the egg, hopefully around about where the little arrow is. And then the early embryo will travel back down to the womb where it will implant. So the fallopian tubes need to be open for natural conception. But with IVF, it doesn't matter if the tubes are open because in IVF we bypass the, the fallopian tube and put the embryos directly into the womb. So how can the fallopian tubes get blocked? Well, many ways, but the main reason is pelvic inflammatory disease or PID. And for some women, they might not know that they've had an, uh, an inflammatory disease of their fallopian tubes. And it can be caused by, uh, often by sexually transmitted infections such as chlamydia, which are silent infections and will cause blockage of the tubes without the woman knowing. So it's really important that sexually active women get their STIs checked quite regularly to see if they're carrying anything like chlamydia because this can lead to infertility. And I went through this in the video about STIs. So if a woman's having problems getting pregnant, at some point she may have her fallopian tubes checked to see if they are open. And there are various ways of doing this. And two of the main ways are histosalpingogram or a technique called a high cozy. They basically inject some substance into the womb and then they try to visualize that the substance comes out through this end of the fallopian tube near the ovary. And if it doesn't come out, then that means the tube is blocked. And the third thing I wanted to talk about today is endometriosis. This is relatively common in women and it's a really a horrible disease to have. It's where the lining of the womb is found outside the womb, like we can see in this diagram here. The lining of the womb can be found in the fallopian tube, on the ovary, and in on the outside of the womb, etc. It's really a painful disease. It can cause scarring of the reproductive system and block the fallopian tubes as well, and cause inflammation. And 14% of infertile women have endometriosis. Unfortunately, if you have this disorder, it is very uh, difficult to diagnose. And for some people, there are various stages of endometriosis. For mild endometriosis, you might be able to get pregnant naturally, but for severe endometriosis, it can be very difficult to get pregnant without fertility treatment. So if you have any concerns that you might have endometriosis, it's a really good idea to get this sorted out. Um, for your fertility, but also um, you shouldn't be suffering in silence with um, the pain that you may have during endometriosis. So that's just a whistle stop tour of chapter nine of the book, what causes infertility and how we test for it. So I hope you've enjoyed that and you can read the blog at globalwomenconnected.com.
Thank you very much.